Today as is Father's Day, I want us to consider the life of Eli and his two sons. Our church incorporates the youth and fathers, and it could be youth day and Father's Day. We live in a secular democracy. We are almost in there, if not already in there, where the Christian worldview is now being marginalized. The God divine institution of family is now being redefined. Family has always been the foundation and the institution of society that was divinely ordained by God Himself. So, fathers, you are the spiritual foundation on which a family is built. Fathers, you are the spiritual foundation in which God has established the family. Amen. But the world system has now wants to disassemble what God has ordained. And when God has put heaven as a man and Eve as a woman, for family to be instituted, there's no other way that it can take place. We find the culture now has changed. They redefine what a family can be. Two men can be a family and raise up two. Two women can be. It's unbiblical. I need to speak up against it. Yes, amen. We need men of God and men and women of God to stand up. That is why we find so much of chaos in the culture today. Because family is now being redefined. And the enemy attacks the father. If the priest of the house is moved, families will never be the same. So we're moving into a secular democracy where religious worldviews are no more happening. Is what the culture now starts to take. An eight year old boy, because in the news a week in Minnesota, eight year old boy <coughs> defending his mom <coughs> and was shot by the head. When the spiritual standing of a father is not in standing with the scriptures, we're going to have chaos in the family, chaos in the culture. Yes. Because we don't have men and women, fathers that have taken their rightful place. Yes. If we look in the church today, there's only about 12 or 10 fathers. <laughs> Globally, if the fathers are just mental from their position, the youth will diminish the church. Because if fathers don't come to church, their sons and daughters won't come to church. So if the devil can get all of the fathers and move them from their rightful position, the church will be defeated. And it is evident. Because fathers are not found in church. It's a sad state, and the word of God needs to be preached boldly. Because we need to come back to our rightful stand, what God has ordained for families. An eight year old boy defending his mom, <coughs> shot dead, lost to hospital and died. That's why we get gender based violence, because we don't have men that are subject to the word of God. Men are not standing in getting spiritual guidance from God Almighty. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says it like this All scripture, is God breathing? Yes. It is the bread of God. Yes, a mess. Yes, yes. It is useful for teaching, yes. rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Amen. Yes. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work, yes. including parts that feature bad examples. I don't want to be called a good pastor. Hey, this pastor is poor. He allows me to do what I want. It's not hard. No, that's a poor example. Sin is to be called by the high standard of scripture. Don't ever say this pastor is poor. That means I'm not fulfilling God's word. All scriptures are God-breathed and useful for teaching. 
for rebuking, for correcting and training in righteousness. Amen. Yes. That's the word of God. Yes. Amen. And the morning Eli is an, exactly the kind of bad example that stands as a warning to me and to many of us here. Eli is a priest, he is a judge, and above all, he is a father. Fathers, I want you to know that you are priests in your house. Fathers, listen to me, you are the priest of your house. Your wife is the crown of your head. She is not your neck, she doesn't control you. She accomplishes what God has told you. So far as you leave the house, you are the priest in your house, you could be a priest in the ministry, but more above that, you are fathers. And as a father, you're also a judge. You've got to judge and bring your children under correction. Let's look at the life of Eli verses number 27 and 28 of 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 27 and 28. Now a man of God came to Eli and said to him, This is what the Lord says. Did I not kill and reveal myself to your father's house when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your fathers are all the tribes of Israel to be my priests, to go up into my altar, to burn incense, and to wear the ephod in my presence. I also gave your fathers out all the offerings I made with fire by the Israelites. What a privilege was given to Eli to perform the liturgy in the church as a priest, a privilege to bring the worship and lead the children of God into worship and burn the incense and come into and where the ephod, the ephod was something divine, only the high priest was there because that enabled him to communicate with God. God would speak to the high priest. What a privilege. God has blessed us as fathers with a privilege and honor to be a exactly. What a honor it is to raise up a family. It's a God ordained blessing upon fathers. How many fathers do not take that responsibility? We have so many single mothers where fathers have just left their wives and their children and their because they've lost their spiritual authority and power. They've lost their focus on God has put upon them. That is why we have so much of problems. That is why the youths are in array. That is why families are breaking down. That is why sons and daughters are not in church because fathers, as a priest, the requirements of a priest that his family might be raised up serving Jesus. God is very strict when it comes to the poor of a servant of God. He's got to raise up, you've got to keep to the high standards of scripture, as I read in 2 Timothy chapter 3. So Eli was afforded all this great privilege. It's a privilege to serve God. When God calls you into a ministry, or God gives you a family to, to manage, it's a honor. It's a privilege. Do it to the best of your ability. Do it with Bigger, do it with humility. Yes. Do it with love and do it in correctness with what God wants to say. Amen. Let's not deviate from what God wants us to do. First of all, God chose his family to serve the people of Israel as priests. This went all the way back to the time of Moses and Aaron to deliver the people from Israel, people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. Aaron was the first high priest and his descendants served after him. As priests, Eli and his family were given the privilege to go to the altar and make sacrifices for the people. They were also given the privilege of burning the incense on special services. They were also allowed to get close to the Ark of the Covenant that's in front of the curtain. Exodus chapter 30 verse number 5. And then Eli and his family were also given the privilege of sharing the offerings 
made by fire. God always makes provisions for the priests of God. And his family to share in the portions of the meat that was offered on the sacrifice. But Eli's sons abuse the privilege that God has given to us. Don't ever abuse your authority. When we are called by God, we are positioned in a position of authority, but under submission. Don't abuse our power from the pool. Yeah. Don't use to tell people what to do and how to do it. Yeah. Don't abuse the power that God has called you and get too swollen there and think that you are the end all and be all. Yes. God can drop you tomorrow mm-hmm. and can raise up somebody else. Yes. God can drop Reuben tomorrow and somebody else can raise. Yes. Don't ever think that you are super. Eli and his sons messed up. Young people, don't mess up your lives with poor choices. Look at something that you're going to do and see how you turn up 10 years from now. It may look good now. Make the right choices. Because the choices you make, you are going to live with. The choices that you make today, young people, today, you're going to live with it for another 20, 30 years. Don't do what the culture says. The culture tells you that you need to have a boyfriend in school. No, tell them, I got Jesus. The culture wants you to get involved, come to the clubs on a Friday for the matinee. Say no to it. Young people say no. But if you don't have a father, to those fathers that are gone on, the mothers now take on the men. You become the spiritual head of the house. Because you are divine with your father from above. He's overseeing you. If your parent is not in spiritual line, obviously it's going to come down to the children. So this is what we need to do. So they had the privilege of sharing the portions of the people and the offerings as well as from the Lord's portion of the offering. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 29, A man of God comes to uh, Eli with all the privileges that he's got. Verse 39 Why do you scorn my sacrifices and my offerings that I prescribe for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choice parts of every offering that was made for the people of Israel? The word scorn we translated in the Hebrew means to keep. Don't keep my worship. The sons were abusing the worship. To keep something and they never keep their dog. I love my pets, I don't keep. But I saw some people keep their dogs. Mm-hmm. Have you seen people keep people, human beings? Mm-hmm. Don't keep. Why do you scorn my sacrifice and offering that I prescribe to my people? God's to say to life, why do you keep it my sacrifice? This goes back to what Eli sons were doing. They were taking more than they're supposed to take. When God places you as a custodian in whatever ministry you do, don't abuse your power. Don't take what you're not supposed to take. It is dangerous. They took more than they could take. And apparently Eli was not guiltless in the matter. The man of God also includes Eli. He says that Eli and his two and his sons have fattened themselves. 
So the father knows what is going on, being the priest, but is allowing these things to happen. Sometimes as fathers, as parents, we know what's going on and we allow things to go on. Now that's okay. God is gracious. Yes, God is gracious. But don't measure him on his grace too long. Because whatever you do, he's gracious, he's failing, but you can leave yourself to self destruction. Yes. Eli the priest knew what is going on. Parents, if you see your children being out of order, bring them to order. Amen. If not, get the elders of the church. And call it up. Don't try to deal with it yourself and cover it up. It will lead to destruction. The church is here to help you and guide you. With spiritual guidance. Setting the high standards of God that we are accountable to. With righteous judgment. Yes. Eli knew what they were taking, but he still ate from the meat that his sons brought back. The second thing Eli did, he honored his sons above God. If my son is out of order, I will bring him in order. And you've got to come to church. As long as he's living with me. If he's out of the country, that's fine. We go to church in another country. Hey, fathers. Are your sons and daughters in church? Fathers, are our sons and daughters raised up in church? I'm sorry it's a heavy message, but I'm bring you on the right way. I just want to make you happy and make you feel all good. But you went out of no spiritual food. I want to stare at us in us as fathers that the church of God can move into such great dimensions if we are fathers of the church. The devil has now taken what God has ordained and removed fathers out of the rightful position. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is in strife. We need to get fathers back into the house of God. And what's the ripple effect that will have? Yeah. Gender-based violence will come to zero. Yeah. No political party can stop gender-based violence. It is only the word of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. The fathers know the rightful positions. And they know where they stand as God has commanded them to do so. Youngsters will be hanging around the street. They'll be serving Jesus. There'll be no need to be calling evangelistic movements, special services. Men and women will be serving in the ministry and taking care of the house of God. They bully people at church. Don't be a bully in church. <laughs> They'll be bullying people for their Don't be a bully in church. Yes, <laughs> amen. Some pastors like bullying the congregations, not in our church. If you watch the big screens, they bully them. Be careful. Then they're committing adultery with the ladies that work at the gates of the tabernacle. The father knows exactly what the boys are doing. These are priests serving in the house of God. They're taking more than they can, they're robbing people. Or whatever they brought their sacrifices to offer to God. And above that, they were committing adultery with the ladies that served by force. So, what does a father do when you know that your child and your sons and daughters are not living a life that's pleasing to God? Are you becoming accommodating? Are you letting this go with the flow? Are you scared as parents to confront them? <laughs> Too many fathers are scared because they're not living a life for Jesus. Yes, amen. Yes. Live them, they're big enough. No, the Bible doesn't say they're big enough. 
as a father, you have a right to bring them into the church. Even if they're married with children. Read the book of Samuel. It's all there, what I'm telling you. Go home and read it. And you'll see what happens. When you abuse your authority in the church, and in our families. Now, these are priests. This I've talked about. If I bring it contemporary, when they went into the tabernacle, they were going to church. The offering it says it's liturgy. They bring worship, praise and worship. They were deacons, stewards. He knew what they were doing. They were sleeping around with the woman who served in the tent. But he did not stop their actions, Eli, or remove them from their priestly sons. He honored the sons of God. A direct violation of the first command. You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. I cannot love somebody here more than God. If somebody is out of order, as the priests, as the pastors, as the council, you've got to bring it to order and hold it to the high standard of scripture. Yes. So that they can repent, not to criticize them and judge them, so they can repent, be restored, and go through a healing process. But if you leave it unattended and say, no, don't worry. I'm a good pastor. No, I'm not worried. No, it's you living. No, that's a bad pastor. It's not good. <laughs> you don't let things go unattended because you uphold everything to the standards of Scripture with righteous judgment. Eli may have been a good priest, but he was a poor father. Just like Eli, we can be righteous men but still fail as fathers. Don't get too busy with Jesus. And see your family in peace. One of the key elements in, in pastoral is that your family priorities must come first. Because you can't run your family, you cannot run your church. And you've got to spend time with your family. Very important. Or you can neglect your family. It's very important in our studies. They emphasize the response to your family. As you're a priest, you're also your father. Always remember that. That's your first position in the sight of God. They made mistakes while the father was there and they continue to make these mistakes. There are three lessons that we hear. We can learn from them. Eli ignored the spiritual growth of his boys, Huffley and Phineas. They were supposed to be his successors. In 1 Samuel 2, chapter 12. But both of them were worthless men who did not know the Lord. For the word of God to call you worthless. <coughs> it's a strong word. Eli's sons never believed in the existence of God. Eli was a spiritual man. But the wicked life of Hophni and Phineas indicates that Eli neglected the spiritual growth of his sons when they were children. Fathers, mothers, you can give your children everything, but give them spiritual growth. Teach them what it is to read the Word of God. It's good to make them academics. Life successful, yes, we want that. We need that. To give them emotional support, yes, you've got to do that. To take care of their physical upbringing, yes, you've got to do that. But are we feeding them with spiritual growth? No, that's last on the list, or even never. We want it about the future. You can gain the whole world, but don't lose this soul. Yes. Remember. We don't pay attention to spiritual growth. 
We think they're inherited because of our Christian heritage. If you're born in a garage, you're not going to be a car. <laughs> if my mom gave birth to me in a garage, she was living in a garage, double garage, that doesn't make me a car. <laughs> no. That's what we think. We come to church, we say we're Christian. No, we never get a pump that with spiritual growth. There's many Christians, but there's no true believers. Yes. Because if you're a true believer that loves God to be found in the house of worship. Yes. Consistently. Yeah. Just don't work with the price tag, Christian. Yeah. How many people say I'm a Christian? Yeah. But you haven't done nothing for Jesus. What have you done for the ministry? What have you done? Can we see some evidence that you are a believer? You shall know them by them. Yeah. Now we walk past a tree where young boys and see there's no mangoes, we walk past. We knew that's a mango tree. And we took all the mangoes off it. <laughs> but see that no mangoes in never wear. <laughs> you take, when you see fruits in somebody's life, you want to be, hey, come on, pray for me, brother. I can see something in you. Pray for me, sister, because I can see this fruit. There's something happening in your life. But somebody got no fire in them, no fruits, you ever go to that? No. No, you can get nothing. But they give you complaints. Oh, come on, come on. Bless the Lord. Eli did not teach God's principles to his boys. They used violence to get what they want. They used the greed. Eventually, people stopped bringing a sacrifice. 1 Samuel 2 16, we can read all that. They stopped bringing a sacrifice. Often, and Phineas did not know God as they did not respect God or his ways. So they were not afraid of robbing from God. You see, when you've got no respect for God, and you don't have fear for God, to fear God means to take Him seriously. Yes, amen. Yeah. To fear God is not to be scared of God. To fear God means you take Him seriously. Amen. These boys need to rob people. That's why you can find some pastors can stand from the pulpit blatant and say the Holy Spirit is speaking and say, God is telling you to give me 10,000 and your business. They can rob you. Because it's in the Bible. Look at these boys, they were in the temple. They were robbing people. Be careful of these men. Oh. You know God's wrath in the Old Testament was an active wrath. We are living now under the great dispensation of grace where God's wrath is passive. Yes, yes, yes. What he can do and could have done now, it's only because of his grace. But there's coming a time in the tribulation, Amen. Mm -hmm. in the great tribulation, the three and a half years into the seven years, mm -hmm. where you're going to see the full force of God's hand, mm -hmm. where brimstones will fall from heaven. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the grace of God, how many of us would have been here? Jesus. You know the story tell you what happens as I come to the end of this. I'll tell you what happened. Eli's boys were guilty. Of so many things, but he failed to bring them to order. He could have brought them to the judge. In Leviticus, if you did not comply, you come to the elders and you could be stoned to death. Stoned. But he still never brought them up. He never made it. He felt he just spoke about it, but he never really told them. Sometimes as parents, we talk about what we need, but we don't really call it this. So he failed to take full responsibility for his action. There are three other lessons for modern day fathers that we need to know. First, we cannot love our children too much that we will hold them. You can't love them too much. Yes, we love them. But if you love them too much, then you're going to compromise the standards. <coughs> And you don't want to punish them. Yes, we don't abuse our children. You cannot physically assault your children. But you can punish them and correct them without using violence. Proverbs 30 25. Second, we must discipline our children when necessary. Proverbs 30 verse 24. 
Thus, our children may be grown up. But Reuben arranged them up in marriage. And now they live in their lives. No, let me give you a scripture. Matthew 18, verse 14 and 17. Call the elders, two or three, and bring them under this scripture. As they tell as long as you are still living and the children are alive, even though they are married, bring them under order. Yes, amen. Oh. As I close, the actual breath of God in the Old Testament, if it still applies today, if it wasn't for the grace of God, oh, how many pastors would have turned up? Ooh, yeah. Plenty. Maybe I wouldn't even be here. Yeah. If the active, no, the active wrath of God was still here. Oh, we wouldn't have been there. We wouldn't have been there. It's only to His grace. Yeah. But don't take the grace of God for granted and give you a right to go do what you want to do. Amen. That's not what the grace does. When the grace of God is upon you, God's grace, the Holy Spirit promised you to live a righteous life. Yes. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 16 and 18. He told me lie. This is one of the men coming from the battle of the triumph of the kingdom. 1 Samuel 4, 16 and 18. Read it with me if you can. I have just come out from the battle from the battle line. I have fled in this very day. Ida asked, What happened, my son? The man who brought the news cried, Israel fled before the first time, and the happy has suffered a heavy loss. Also, your two sons, Hophni and Phineas, are dead. The wrath of God. Don't play with God. Jesus. This is holy ground. Church. Amen. Don't mess around. Amen. And the ark of the covenant of oh God's presence was captured. When you fail as a leader, the presence of God leaves the chapter. And let's be having church. Because you think you're doing it right. But it's only the grace of God that we still have. When he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell back of his chair by the side of the gate. Oh God. His neck was broken and he died. For he was an old man and he was heavy. And he had led his way for 40 years. A failed father. Probably a good priest. But not willing to address the issues. Leave it. Push it out of the car. One of the saddest words in 1 Samuel 4 verse 19 to 20 perhaps record the saddest words you will ever get to read. Israel's glory has departed. These last words of a dying woman, the wife of Phineas, are an accurate description of the predicament of the entire nation. As tragic as it is, the word of God shows us was a disaster that could have been prevented if not for a man who failed as a father. Eli was the name of the man. All the disaster could have been prevented by one father who could have collected his sons and he brought a tight nation and the glory has departed. Let's read verse number 19 of 1 Samuel 4. His daughter-in-law, this is now the daughter, the, the wife of Phineas, 
was pregnant and near the time of delivery. When she heard the news that the ark of God had been captured and the death, that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she went into labor and gave birth, but was overcome by labor pains. Verse number 20. As she was dying, the woman that is attending to her said, Don't despair. You have given birth to a son. <laughs> but she did not respond. Am I being really correct today? Yes. Or pay attention because she's gone. She named the boy Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel because of the capture of God of the God. She saw the death of her father-in-law and her husband. She said, verse number the glory has departed from Israel, for the heart of God has been captured. That's the act of wrath of God. If it still applies today, many of us or all of us will never be it. But it's only to his grace. But there's good news this morning, church. The glory can be recovered. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. The glory can be recovered. Because David. A adulteress. A murderer. Oh, come on. You can name it. But he had a heart for God. Amen. When you put God first. And not your sons and your daughters and your children or your congregation. Oh, come on, son. I said when you put God first, not even your congregants, not even your wife. When you put God first, like David, even if you mess up, you can get the glory back. Oh, come on, somebody. The glory back in the house. I don't know if you live in the house, but there's no more glory. When you get up the morning, say, I don't know what this day is done. The glory has departed. The glory is gone out of the house, Master. I got no peace. Bring back the glory. As fathers, get down on your knees. Call a family order. Get your son and your daughters into a prayer order call. Tell them, get a phone call. Wherever you are, son, wherever your daughter, get to ask the Lord. The glory can be recovered. 1 Samuel 13, verse number 14. He had a heart of God. Fathers, let's become men that has a heart of God this morning. I trust that God bless you this morning. Amen. As I share the powerful message, Thank you, Lord. don't take your ministry, take your ministry serious. Whatever you do for God, as called men, women, boys and girls, as parents, as mothers of the house, as fathers of the house, take your responsibility seriously with spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Or we'll leave our sons and daughters into destruction. Mm -hmm. Many will be left behind. At the rapture, we'll be left behind. The coming of Jesus is at the doorstep. Mm -hmm. Only those that believe and confess him as a personal savior, I guarantee eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus, I believe Amen. if this morning you haven't accepted Jesus Christ, whether you're 15 years, 60 or 60 or 70, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God, Amen. that you died, you were buried, and you were raised, Amen. and that you have forgiven me of my sins. I believe you and I confess with my tongue that you are Lord and God of my life. Amen. I believe in you and I trust you. That's all you've got to do for self, to believe simply in Jesus. Not how good you are, not how many days you came to church, but what Jesus has done for you. I want to leave you with that, fathers. Recover the glory. Bring back the glory to the house. Hallelujah. God bless you. I think it's important that we pray for our fathers this morning.